Perfect timing, nailed it. We do have the blue Zerg in the top right hand side. This is to start us off here. Dark from Dragon Kaiser Gaming. Of course, they're both from Dragon Kaiser Gaming, so teammates representing in this one is in the bottom left. Our red Terran player is Oliveira. All right, well, Oliveira takes out Lambo. Wasn't a super clean ride. We got there, more or less. Let's just have ourselves the little look around the map. Obviously, that gold base is an opportunity to uh, take advantage of. Maybe at some point, this map really can become quite big itself. There's quite a lot of bases. There's obviously got a fun kind of top versus bottom dynamic to it as well, which has given us quite a few cool games lately, so... Definitely some uh, potential for some fun games coming up. As for now, we just see the hatchery first from Dark, so nothing out of the ordinary from him in the very first couple of moments here. Uh, yeah, very regular to just start things out. I see the gas going down over on the side as well, so just get that going too. And so far, so good. Mark a pool on top of it. And Gromald, thank you so much for the 31 month resub on the Prime. Welcome back for 31. Always appreciate the big resubs, guys. Thank you so much. Continue to support StarCraft. Obviously, we're looking to make another great year of StarCraft as well. 2023 coming to a close. We're going to have our 2023 championship coming up in January. Still a couple of events over the Christmas period as well from us as well, so don't worry about that. Uh, the schedule is absolutely rammed just in general, so uh, lots to look forward to, basically, if you're a StarCraft fan from Warty TV. And uh, pretty much at the moment, aiming to do it all again in 2024. So, very exciting times if you love the StarCraft. And all you got to do is really stick to that and keep on watching. <laughs> it's quite a simple request as a couple drones are going to go nibble up a hatchery a few moments here. So, nibble, nibble. Some queens, some lings. On the way through as well, we just see the Reaper heading out to the top right hand side. Oliveira will try and poke around for a little bit of information gathering then. See if there's something you can uh, figure out or pick up on. We'll see if you can get a drone kill. That would be incredible. But if it comes to the Spore Crawler in plenty of time. I say plenty of time. It's pretty close, but at this level, that's usually plenty of time, isn't it? So, yeah. If it comes to the Spore Crawler, that will be that. And you see a couple of queens still going through the drones as well. Command centers continue to produce. And just have... That being a triple CC style this time around from Oliveira. Was not afraid to ramp up the aggression when it came to playing against Glambo and play some of that two base heavier stuff, but he's going to go straight to three bases here against Dark. So see our barracks moving off of the reactor. And yo, D Money, 0686, thank you so much for the 14 month resub on the prime. Forty, will that be a Katowice? I don't know, man. If I knew it was going to be a Katowice, do you think I'd be able to tell you? Probably not, right? What we do know for this year of StarCraft is that there is going to be a World Championship at the end of it. I have not confirmed where. I would honestly say that if there was going to be a World Championship at Katowice, they would have just already announced it, because why hold back on announcing something that happens every year? But obviously that's no, you know, nothing to live by. In-game music is a bit loud? Ay ay ay. The day people tell me the in-game music is a bit loud is a wild one. Is it just the music or game sounds as well? I can actually just turn the music down if you need. Let me know. Get back on the, uh... The editor. Faking comes through, Overlord will take a few shots. Already gonna get chased out over on the other side as we just have our queen back into the main base. Again, Viking is gonna go through, Overlord is gonna get picked off, drone, uh, SCV, sorry, is gonna build up a supply a depot. And yeah, Banshee, Aliens, Marine. All coming through for a couple of moments. Now that continues in. 10 drones, 11 drones coming up. The Overlord is about to finish. Our Hellions and so on 
We'll gather in the center. The few roaches coming through the center as well. Just going to be seeing our couple of barracks coming through. The roaches are going to move forward. Hellions going to continue in as well. Banshee is going to go after a couple of roaches. There's just the music. Okay. Um, this roach is just being chased. You guys won't miss anything if I just tap here for a sec. Take that down like a 40 or so. Let me know if that's any better, guys. Turn the uh, sounds back up now as well. Banshee is going to go chipping away. A few of them roaches, so damage being dealt. Obviously pushing that back. Doc not finding much with his early start. Is now going to go into the Ling Speed, double Evo. Probably not going to play a roach style from here on out. We've seen a lot of these roaches into Ling Bane. Ling Speed, Roach Speed's both coming through. The Infestation Pit is coming out. So again, a lot of establishment being made here in these early stages. We just have ourselves those melee upgrades starting as well. So yeah, kind of what we expect. I guess the infestation bits may be a bit faster than I thought it would be. And then we're only just now going into melee upgrades, but there's no baneling there, so no baneling speed. This, for the moment at least, is just going to be Ling Roach Ravager. Queen's coming across, Bench is going to get hit. And the Hive will start from uh, Dark as well. Just going to bring that straight through. Hatchery is setting up on that bottom side. And yeah, 1-1 one, one attack upgrades, Marines, Medivacs, all coming out. Factory going to finish up in the front. More tank production and stuff, but we're going to a fourth base, so this is not going to be anywhere, you know, any sort of all-in or anything from Olivera. He is committing to what should lead us in general just to a longer game. Couple of Banshees go out and about. Hellions continue to the center, uh, sorry, continue to the center, but there's going to be Hellions already there, so not much to be gained from Dark. Trying to press forward and take that middling position, not much to be had at all. Christian Ravager is going to knock on these rocks as you open up this space and get into the middle of the map. The armory is on the way up from Oliveira as well. Combat shield is coming through. A few additional marines still coming out. So all of that getting produced right now. Come a couple tanks, a few marines, the combat shield coming through. Hellions, banshees, marines, and tanks moving out over the left side of the map. This is what Oliveira does, man. He finds these times where he's just got so much stuff. And he really is able to hit so nicely in those times. He's really able to get so much with them. The roaches there get one hellion in the center straight away. Extra banelings will morph. Our units spread out. Tanks are beginning to get sieged. And the lings and the banes are going to try and close the distance onto this army. Tanks will be able to hold their ground dark. Not just lodging this. Oliver would have a massive supply lead if he was to spend his money. He's got 1,500 minerals banked up now, dark. Getting a better surround, good for us with Bars, getting a double kill as well. Endivax load back up, pulling back down the bottom side of the map. 2-2 two, two melee upgrades coming through, the Adrenal Glands coming up as well. Dark will take a moment just to knock down a set of rocks. The Banshees are going to take down a base meanwhile, so we are going to see a base going down. That's going to be expensive. Turns around, looking to finish that base off. It had a transfusion on it. The Banshee's out of reach of the Spore Crawler. Will get that kill, so Oliveira will succeed in dealing big damage there. Now the Marines continue to trade out. The Lynx continue to take some hits. And Adrenal Gland's about to finish up, so Dark will be a little bit more powerful with the Lynx very shortly. Just isn't there yet. So a bit of work still to be done as a couple of Vipers will begin to consume up that base and work through that. One Marine will take the Watchtower, as again, Vikings, 2-2 two -two upgrades. Tanks and all the rest continue into play. The Drill and Claws also on the way up at the moment. So we are going to have, really, the Widow Mine starting to become a much bigger factor of this. The 
Go back and forth. The tank sieging up in the center of the map. Adrenaline Claw still coming through. Plus one vehicle weapons coming out as well. Things and Ravages make their way over to the edges. This Liberator just flying straight through all the Queens. That's going to be a good shutdown too. Dark. Definitely feeling as though he's starting to control us a little better as well, right? It felt as though at first maybe he couldn't kind of immediately shut his opponent down or anything. Now, we're definitely getting to the point where he's doing very well. Those three melee continues out. The Ultra Dust Cavern still coming through. That will pop in the very near future. And you see our commands. And they're going to go float down to the 6 o'clock position. Drilling floors, GG upgrades. Plus one vehicle weapons all on the way out. The Marines get down the bottom there. They're going to stim up. Going to go back over the right-hand side. Lings ravages Banelings pressing forwards. Blinding Cloud from the Vipers landing on the siege tanks. Well, Dark is going to get surrounded by these Marines. So he's able to take the start of this fight nicely. Now I'm worried that these Ravages are very much so on their own. You can see Dark Supply is not really holding up. Especially as these Marines can just do so much. And they absolutely slaughter them Ravages. And that is a big loss from Dark. He loses so much here. A very expensive loss from Dark. And that is going to hurt him big time. As now his Supply has dropped right back down. I really felt like Dark was just about starting to really get the game under wraps again. But... Clearly not good enough to go attacking into your opponent. It's a tough one because you probably what you saw initially was probably like, yeah, that is actually good for me to attack into, right? Like you didn't see very many units. It probably was the right time to say, hey, let's pull the trigger, let's commit into that position. But then the Marines from the other side, they are really what messed you up because you had no Banelings left over for them. The Ravagers had no retreating pathway. All they could do is corrosive battle near the Marines, hope to make them split and miss a few attacks, and then just try and take as good a trade as they could, which obviously was never going to be good enough for the expensive kind of nature of those Ravagers, that was almost always going to be a pretty hefty downward trend, so not a great situation. Those Medivacs will load up a few of those bio units, going to go boosting back over the right-hand side. Continue to see our melee upgrades, 3-3 coming in, Kitness Plate, and also game is not done by a long shot, but definitely a good trade from Oliveira, going to help him out. Just as Dark wants to transition into later game units, Oliveira will take a bit of a step up on his opponent and maybe have more of a chance to deal some damage here in the next little while as Marines will uh, drop down, trying to find a bit more damage themselves. The bio pushing up through the top at the same time, so all of that continues. Bio force coming through, a couple of Banelins getting knocked down. Bio continues to go chase, now down the bottom. And we are going to get rid of this hatchery. Doc just unable to really fight this bio army right now. Still looking for further and additional tech to see him through to some better fights. I love this, though. Counterattacking is one of the ways he can still do very well for himself, and you will obviously notice this. The SCVs there that we're pulling are going to pull straight into Ultras, so 19 workers killed. Oliveira taking serious damage. Dark starting to defend back at home. Obviously, he lost a base in the process, but he's now killing 34 SCVs. These Marines are also low. If these Ultras just get into range for a moment or two. Every single swipe is killing off so much. Oliveira, why were we so hurt? Why were we oh so overstimmed? That is actually very painful. That's going to come back to bite you in a big way. Well, so now these last couple Ultras, actually even one of them just going to walk away from this fight. So more preserved here. The drop getting cleaned up in the main base as well. So no longer concern on the map that Oliveira has to worry about. So that's a big relieving sigh. Again, the pressure just eases up as we continue through for the moment. Medivacs Vikings continue to come about then, so just trying to see what it is that they can do. Do you have another Wood of Mine shot just going off? Not really going to deliver anything too serious, though. Not too much of an issue at all. As again, Liberator Ghost Production has begun, so we're really starting to take a step into the late stages here from Oliveira. Really starting to see this next phase of the game develop. Meanwhile, from Dark, he consumes up with five Vipers or so, and really looks to have a lot of spellcasting available in the next fight. Fire Force coming through, all just getting chased back. Limps and Marauders in the tank continue to build. Planetary out down that bottom side. 
Okay, and just seeing the Liberators and the Marauders, the SCVs all coming through. Ventures and Beans continue producing. You know, as the game slows down, kind of mention at the start, this map can be pretty big, right? You can definitely see some late game develop on a map that has you know, access to the gold base on the bottom side and kind of this top versus bottom kind of feel to it. You know, Oliveira and rotate and try and, you know, hit different sides as much as he wants. Dark should, in general, have a lot of preparation time to defend his bases or to create counterattacks if he doesn't feel like he can defend a position like he's going to do right now and as he's done numerous times throughout this game so far. As counterattack's going to move into what is just a lot of units, snipers are going to go down, the Vipers will be taken out. Yeah, they got some Parasite bombs out, but I'm not sure if that's necessarily worth cause, you know, the life of every single Viper. And yes, they can rebuild, they can set back up, but... Uh, they were already full energy too. Dark Supply, again, just drops off a little bit there and does not find a quick way back on track with it. What a mine, 27 kills, you're kidding me, like these mines... Throughout not just this game, but in this series in general, have been extremely good. We've seen Mines consistently doing so much for Oliveira. We've seen a couple of 20 plus kills. As we do see 20 plus kills right there on the SCVs, so that is all of uh, Dark at least striking through for some further damage and succeeding in the process. Chunk of Banley's coming now. We see the extra Link still moving around, so Dark continues to counterattack. I feel like Oliveira's on the verge of, well, I think he is just on the point of being all in. Very similar to what happened against Lambo earlier, where he just got to this stage where he couldn't really do anything else, bar yeah, he couldn't really do anything else, bar just sort of send his army. But his army was strong enough to win that game, and it's absolutely strong enough to win this one. 40 army supply in the lead. He might not be, re be rebuilding very much, but he can absolutely trade and fight. There's the bio. With these few ghosts, will do what they can. It's not like Dog's army is some incredibly teched up force or anything either. A few more Corruptors on the way out. Marauders and Marines all building through. The Lings and the Banes are going to crash on in once again. Oliveira, now only 20 army supply ahead. It's starting to look less convincing. Remember, the Dark has 82 drones. Really felt like Oliveira was meant to kind of attack and never stop. Just let that push try and end the game. Now he backs it up. The economies are going to start coming into play again, and that favors Dark. It favors Dark a lot, in fact, so... Oliveira, perhaps, with some incoming problems. Transfusions try and buy some time, but Snipes are just a little bit too quick to fire. A lot of queens going down on that one. That actually removes some of the anti air you have targeting down Medivac, so Medivac can a bit more freely move over to the main base. All the other corruptors are here. Obviously, if we have uh, any energy on this Viper, we would have abducted. Goes that you get unloaded as the Medivacs get caught. These lings will not be enough to fight on the side. We will need some splash damage to go alongside them. This base just looks as though it will go down. Red Fest being gas. Not accessible for Darks, so Oliveira doing what he can to keep Darks' economy low and to stop the drone count from really coming into play because that's the one thing that's going to kill Oliveira here over time. That's on the center, a couple drones going down, single ling will lead the charge, where the mine goes kaboom, get rid of that zergling. Just one fire attack coming in. The Ultra just about to finish up. Another hatchery wants to go to the top. As our Zerglings continue to move around the center of the map, Widow Mine connects. Big shot right there. That's another one. Just just any sort of free units is just going to kind of trail Doc back to being level on army supply, perhaps, and not give him the chance to make use of his better economy. At this point, is Dark even on a better economy? Oliveira is built back up to 60 workers, and he actually has the gold base as well, so I actually think Oliveira is pretty much fine. One more investors continue up, the extra Ling Bane continues out, plus one flyer attack is coming in. Uh, Zerglings are going to burrow up on that high ground. The bio units will continue to get picked away at. And again, plus one flyer attack still coming through. So building that up, that's about a finish. 22 Zerglings in production as well. Giants let's continue out. Our Marines and Marauders continue in. 
Tommy of Oliveira moves down to the bottom. A couple CCs still coming up. Marines still coming out. And in fact, Marauder Wood Mine production continues through from our Terran. Dark's going to get the base on the left. Oliveira is likely going to deny the gold again. This top left base is one Dark would love with that rich vest being gas. Easy access to a lot of gas income. If you can just keep that alive for a few moments, again, that seemingly has been the problem. As uh, you see, like I say, the lings on the left side generally being annoying as well. There's nothing to stop them walking straight into the natural at this stage. So, Oliver doesn't have the Sim City or the Wall Offs in place to stop these lings again, finding maximum annoyance here. As the Ultra Ling Bane jumps on through the Marines. Spawning now, gonna have to be the defense as a couple of mines go off initially at least. Eight drones have gone down, so again, it is Dark that's losing a, a decent chunk of his uh, economy. 66 to 64 workers, 22 minutes here on Alkyony. Told you guys, these two, in the, some of the ESL Open Cups in days gone by, really did play some long, epic back and forth macro games. And this is a great example of the kind of stuff that could happen between them. They come to somewhat of a standstill, it's very close, tense. And sometimes they just end up from these positions going very late because they both realize that being aggressive can be really the downfall for them. So then they uh, try and change up their, uh, their strat a little bit. They play a bit more passively, and then you really can get into a lot of that very late game so not a situation kind of set up. Plan on coming across. This is going to be uh, setting up once again. Well, a couple times in this game, Oliveira's had the setup. To be able to stand there and fight against a lot of what the Zerg has. Is this going to be one of those times, or is he actually going to fall flat? As I mean, Dark rebuilds a lot, still counterattack, and Oliveira is really running on fumes back at home. He still has 60 SCVs. I mean, I guess he's spread right through the bottom side of the map now, and I guess that's going a long way to help him. So that at least is some good news here, as these few lings. Will go down, but they at least dragged the widow mine splash onto those units as well. Now, a few mauling showing up to clean those widow mines out themselves. Again, the pressure from Oliveira absolutely just refuses to let up. Oh, there he's going to end up grabbing one more queen. The Bioforce continues all the way up to the top. A couple more lings going down. The Bioforce settles. Marines, Marauders, and the Armory coming through. 30 Zerglings in production, and Alings do just jump onto that army. It's jumping straight through into the center of this. Is it enough? Dark army supply once more is down by 30. I feel like I've asked this question 100 times this game. Is it enough from Dark? And a lot of the time the answer has been, well, not really. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have had to ask the question. His overall supply is lagging. Oliveira taking some good positions that Dark can't fight into. Getting bases out of these positions. It's not just like he's setting up and Dark's like, ah, well not going to fight that. Doc's like, oh, I'm not going to fight that, but that means you get rid of this base. And every time that happens, Doc falls into a little bit of a worse position. And Oliveira has been brilliant at creating those opportunities and capitalizing on those opportunities without really exposing himself to those larger swarmy Zerg fights that try and come in from all angles. Doc continues to focus his efforts on killing off the bases on the other side of the map. He's going to find himself the planetary on that gold. Dark is not going to be able to stop the main army, which means GG is called, and Oliveira is going to have himself game number one of this best of three. And what a best of three is going to be as Oliveira fights to have in the top left. The blue Zerg player who will be looking to bounce back from that loss. It is going to be Dark. Against our Red Terran in the bottom right corner of the map, we have ourselves Oliveira. Dark and Oliveira will indeed go the distance in game one and now into game two. Hard lead, we'll see what happens. We'll see, we'll see. You know, so this, to me, this sort of map is less likely maybe end up split as the previous one did. Golden Aura map three, I believe, as well. If we go to that, that's one which can actually be kind of an intriguing one too to d attack into the three bases at least. So, talk about that if we get there. But yeah, maybe this is the best chance we have of seeing a more aggressive game between these two. We'll see. Oliver has snuck a few kind of like Hellbat base builds in recently. We've been having some fun watching those develop, so. Definitely opportunities available here. 
as we get our initial structures up. Barracks on one side, hatch gas, soon to be the pool on the other. No complications on the super early build orders, no one's trying to prox anything, no one's trying to skip anything that is usually gained. So everything does look as though we're going to be in the standard column of gameplay for the first couple of minutes at the very least. Command set starts up, orbital command's halfway done. Oliver has mixed in a good amount of not just uh, kind of pressure builds, but then 3cc builds. So Olivera has been doing a few things kind of differently throughout the game so far today. So something we can continue to look toward is a couple of queens, a few lings all coming out. Olivera, no second guess just yet, although it probably is still a little bit too early for it. So. Probably getting a little bit ahead of myself. It's the factory, and there it is. There's the second gas. The second gas is going to come down. We are going to see a more aggressive variation of the openers here from Oliveira. Absolutely looking as though he will look to apply pressure. He will look to try and get something out of this. Here's our lings. We'll do some nibbling. Actually, on the way up, drone on the way through, Queen and the Overlord coming out as well. A lot of setting up done in the first few minutes. Not a little command coming through on the side of Oliveira, so just bringing that on up. Getting this all in the ways. Axe moves off the reactor, goes across to build up the tech lab. about halfway through depot and low uh ray is gonna lower it means they've got a kill on a link everyone just trying to find out information of course in these early stages information is key you see the factory on the reactor for example is actually very good info to have as dark that's going to tell you a couple of you know bits of info about what this could be what to maybe expect what to be worried about if you don't see anything at a certain point in time he is going to drop a rotron pretty quickly obviously very uh a common occurrence, honestly, for Dark for the most part, so I wouldn't necessarily read too much into that, but it is one thing to absolutely look at here. Something's coming about. Just have our Reaper popping a couple things up, some damage being dealt for the early stages. Five drones going down, so damage is going to add up right there. Again, just going to see Banshee and Cloak all coming through and see where things are going to go in the next few minutes. So again, a little bit of setting up being dealt for the moment. A couple of Hellions pulling back. More drones on the way out. The lab producing as well. All of this on the way in. My barracks on the way. And again, a couple of SCVs and the Banshee coming out as well. The Marine and that cloaking continues up with the stim pack. Also building. So a lot of stuff just on the way in right now. Uh, as queens are going to be there to block the Hellions a little bit. Hellions are going to slip by into this main. Drones get a wrap around. That first Hellion does drop. And Cloak coming up. Banshee on the way. This Banshee is going to go after a few of those drones already. Getting some damage dealt. Four. Five. Workers going down. Job well done. Job really well done, honestly. As now we move in even deeper. Sixth worker, a seventh worker to go down as well, and this is problematic. Oliveira is getting so much damage off of these cloak shees. That ain't meant to happen. I suppose we're just way too late. We'll go back over here. No mobile uh, anti-air, so the Queen's not here yet to really stop this Banshee, which will now start to find a Ling as well, just for good measure. Go on, finish the Ling. Oh, Oliveira, you've missed out on so much potential. Oh, well. If there's anything to leave a line alive, one Ling might be a dark takes a beat down. 15 dead drones. Now, he did kill the six Hellions, but 15 dead drones. And the Banshee is still around as well, so you've got double Banshee to contend with in the future. And you know how good, if you watch any amount of StarCraft, you know these Banshees are absolute gods at being able to just move into the edge, pick off a drone or two, and then backing away without any real losses. Kind of like this. 
If it was double Banji here already, then these uh, drones would have been one shot as well, so it would have been even less time taken to deal this damage. Kind of surprised that we didn't see him. Uh... Yeah, have the second Banshee. Not sure where second Banshee is at. Maybe at home playing defensive just in case Dog moves across. That looks like it's back over here. It's been just getting set back up. Okay, so yeah, second Banshee just came home. The So the first Banshee came home, the second Banshee did just go on the map and decide to kind of try and find some more without Banshee number one. Found a couple drones, so it was not a bad call. Pull back, get these repaired. And then together they can move back on the map and still chip away at drones throughout the course of this game. Sometimes they're great at cleaning up creep in odd positions, and sometimes they can even be kind of a fourth base denial. Or maybe even like a later base denial on some of the edge bases, so... If you're ever unsure what to do with your double banshee and you don't really have the attention to control it, just go step it up, you know, in front of, on top of, the location you expect a zerg to take one of their next bases in. Because at the very least there's a chance that they kill a drone when they, you know, when, that, uh, when the zerg moves it over. And if not, they may, be, may even be able to get the chance to knock down the hatchery as it starts to build. So, it's always a great place to put your Banshees, that next upcoming base, the next expected base of a Zerg, would typically do a lot for you. Let's go our refineries, continue to produce. As Oliveira hands a second factory in, plus two attack, combat shield on the way. He's currently playing around the center. Lots of roaches are going to jump onto those marines though, so that drop will go absolutely nowhere. That one is going to be stopped very much so ahead of time. Not allowed to do anything. Got a few more drones killed. Again, that Banshee uh, play is just coming back through over on the other side of the map. Continue to find a bit of success as we have these queens. At least this time we'll push back. We actually get rid of a Banshee. So finally, Doc knocks one of those down. Puts himself in a bit of a better position as he works himself through that. Tanks and Marines are building up on the side of Oliveira here. Not aggressive. I mean, he is going to build himself the additional base. So he's not going to be too aggressive. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, just going to go into four bases, it seems. It's just going to continue setting up pretty normally. Some Marines do get rid of a couple more creep teams. There's a little bit more creep being picked up. We have our hives still coming through. The overlords are coming in. Things for Rav just continuing out. Plus two missiles, plus two carapace continuing to produce. Let's just have ourselves the Marines, tanks, and medivacs all continuing to gather together. Tank's gonna try and siege. Dark leaps on this opportunity to fight. Good concave coming from both sides, and he still has the creep spread to speed him up in his process here as well. So, a couple of these final battles missing. He couldn't knock down some tanks sooner, but honestly, I don't think we can complain of this. This was a fantastic job. Yeah, out of Dark. Great fight, and that might have just knocked him into a serious advantage here in this game number two. All of the tanks going down is a huge loss. Now we're gonna lose depots over here as well, so continuing to build is gonna become a difficulty. See those couple of depots beginning to drop down and a few more corrosive files once again just going toward the factory, so looking for a little bit extra. Plus two armor about to finish, plus three attack is on the way. Liberators are still going to produce. We'll see Liberate is a great uh, way for the Terran to try and deal with the Ultras at first, just trying to lock down some positions, big damage onto Ultras when they move through those locations. And it just eases the transition oftentimes into ghosts. In this case, it'll chill be enough. We might even have to use those Liberators aggressively just to take Dark's attention off of Oliveira's side of the map. Oh, right now, they're just going to have to be used defensively. Not really much of a choice here. Corrosive Files get rid of one. And then Corrosive Files will very soon get rid of two. Massive drop in Dark's main base. This is going to be Oliveira's last chance to really save himself across this first... Uh, uh, second game, sorry. Yes, uh, so far, somehow, not actually killed any workers, which is impressive. He's only killed two now. With all those units across the map, obviously, he's cleaned out the main base uh, in terms of the hatchery, but drone count has not been dropping off here, Dark. Somehow maintaining all of those. He's probably going to keep on losing a lot on the other side, but he's not being stopped himself. Dark's last few reinforcements coming by. He's just going to have to fall back a little bit. I mean, that's another base going to go down, but we are killing the main base of Oliveira, including his production structures. 
Doc is now down three hatcheries. In fact, Doc is barely surviving when it comes to uh, hatchery counts. There's Oliveira lifting up. Does this turn into some kind of a base trade? One Viper goes down, looking for the Parasitic Bombs, trying to shut down the Medivac count, trying to weaken up that overall army. Do you not hate that, actually? And obviously not in a position where you can repair those STVs, so knocking those lows goes quite well. The Ultra will fight with some drones here as well. Some Roaches will come from the other side. These units obviously realizing that they may as well make the most of their situation and just get as many kills as possible as I think Doc has done. I think his army that remains on the map is a little bit too powerful for what Oliveira is trying to work with here. Russell Bile's finally actually even more of these barracks that are just trying to build singular marines. Kills a couple of them off, stops Oliveira from getting the rebuild underway. And it really does feel as though Dark has game two on lockdown. This was kind of, as we expected, a much more aggressive game, a much more active game. Not allowed to kind of trail through to that later stage situation, which we saw in map number one, as Russell Bile's going to go after the orbital Dark. Up 60 supply, double the workers, fifth, uh, 40 army supply lead. Yes, a lot of it's Roach Ravager, but those Ravagers are turning out to be very good. They've been fantastic thus far in terms of being able to find damage, get on top of things, and just and really put some work in, honestly. That Roach Run about to be done from Dark. Some extra drones on the way up as well. Ravages will take a moment, knock down the barracks, and again, any bit of production you knock down at this stage is pretty much going to be a big advantage to you. It's absolutely something you will benefit from doing. He's pulling back down, obviously, again, Dark taking his time. He's not in any rush to make something happen here, so he's happy to wait it out, play it patiently. Orbital burning, floating back in position. They've obviously both kind of taken the other corners of the side of the map that they were on. So that becomes their new kind of stronghold. And they're going to play out from that position. A lot of the production will come up in those locations too. They're obviously going to be some of the safer locations on the map at this point. So you start to lock those down. And again, we begin to reestablish just dark. That's a massive work ahead start for reestablishing with. He is still playing against triple orbital though, so... That's painful. Income-wise, actually, Oliveira is not in too bad a spot. Triple Mule is actually pretty darn good. Well, that's better than I thought he was going to be able to have to work with here. So, yeah, that's actually a little bit surprising. As Roach Ravager Ultra pulls back around the left side, another Medivac goes boosting around the bottom. Make that two Medivacs boosting around the bottom. Man, three HP on one of them. Oliver was just asking for trouble. I know he's in a rough spot, but it would be worth probably just repairing up those medivacs. Take a few moments, spend a bit of money on it, because you know, just letting them die to like a tap from a queen or a spore crawler is, is really not worthwhile. And you'll see one of those orbitals now going down, so bases are dropping here for Oliveira as he pushes into the top right. Dark's roaches are not enough to deal with this double drop. Dark is reproducing, at least the drones will start to move away, recognizing the trouble they are in. And Dark will struggle to go up the ramp to really again end this. That's the problem that these two are facing with one another. They're just facing opponents which are very difficult to end games against, plain and simple. Once the roaches get there, the few marines are going to have to go lifting up. Roll of command are going to come through, land back into the front. There's a couple more pros of battles will help to knock it down. Space will go down as well. Although we're going to type GG, he's just running out of options. He cannot really start to deal with all of this. And that is going to be our key game three. Great uh, section of the bracket we've landed ourselves in, that's for sure. Clem is likely going to play the winner of this series. Let me just double check. Yep, that's already confirmed. Clem will play the winner of this series. Meanwhile, Max Pack's already 2 0 Ragnarok, 2 1 Bjorn is into the semi finals today. He'll play Showtime Colors or Hero. Clem, Dark, Oliveira in the same section of the bracket. As Skillers, Estrella, and Creator, so Protoss in the semifinals for whoever comes through this current section that we're working on. In the top left hand side, our red. Uh, he's not red, he's blue! He's ready to go though. <laughs> you see what I did there? 
It is going to be Dark from Dragon Kaiser Gaming in this battle of the two teammates. In the bottom right, the actual red player is going to be Oliveira as we get into game. Number three, deciding map, and it's a pool first from Dark. Does that have some aggression attached to it, or what are we thinking of doing here, Dark? What is our plan with that sporting pool already going down in the main base? Great question. What are we looking to do then? I'm very intrigued as to, like I say, what that plan can it becomes. We just see ourselves the hatch gas and pool coming up. Barracks on the way in, the Overlord heading down toward the bottom right hand side, just bringing all of that through here for a couple of moments. So far, so good. Obviously the six lings will come up, so the aggression will begin to build on this one as we just get ourselves underway. Ripper is on the way out, because I say there's a couple of hatcheries coming by. Just getting this all going as our overlord heads down to the bottom right hand side. Reaper is about to finish. Again, command center, the deep hole coming through, the couple of hatcheries building from dark. All of that getting set up now as we speak. So yeah, nothing too aggressive from dark, just the pool first for a little bit of safety here on Golden Aura. And like I say, maybe a bit of aggression as well, with those lings working around from that left hand side. So away they go. Gonna move up here. There's still the Reaper at home. Oliveira playing very safe. Reaper at home means that there shouldn't be a problem. But Falling's getting the main. They're gonna chase the Marine. They're gonna get that kill. SCV's already pulling against them. Means that this is economic damage being done. And this is our Dark. Probably finding more than he should have done off of these six lings. Uh, Oliveira. Plain and simple, honestly. Just shouldn't have let these in. Uh, it sounds obvious, but sometimes the answer is obvious, right? And in this case, I think definitely so. As yeah, that just the, the Lings didn't need to get into the main base. The Marine going down is a pain. And yeah, just didn't respond quite in time. So that is a problem there. As we have ourselves a couple of Queens, the few drones all continuing out. Cyclone and a couple of Marines. Building up on the side of Oliveira as well. So we to get that going. Maybe just drops down a little bit of grenade. Pops the Queen over to the side. The road drone building up from dark. A couple of extractors still coming through. The cyclones are still coming up. We do have the uh, reaper there to try and help out. Drone is just going to cancel for a couple of moments, so nothing too crazy about that. And yeah, cyclones are something which we've obviously seen a little bit of in terms of getting them involved lately in the game. It's not something you see all the time, but. Yeah, more often than not now, Terran players are adding a couple Cyclones in just to harass with early or to help protect them against Roach-based armies initially. is actually a big uh, reason why we're seeing a lot of them, so big reason to see them coming in right now. Let's so get this up and running. Just in the barracks of the high ground, Vision gets rid of the Overlord. We are going to play uh, Bio, 1-1 one, one upgrades are starting, but there's even more Cyclones popping now, so again, Oliver will be quite hefty on the Cyclones. Loving the variety of builds that Oliver is bringing to the game today throughout the uh, six ZVT maps we've now seen him play. He's been pretty darn good at making sure no two games look similar in the early stages. Dangerous because then you never really know what he's going to bring out next, right, as you're putting you know, as his opponent. You know, every game is, you know, full of scouting, full of, you know, uncertainty and just trying to make sure that you don't cut the corners that are going to get punished this time around. So, that's obviously a pretty big deal. So, a few drones will take some shots, come to the production tab, and that is going to be up to three base saturation, six to six drones pretty much when those ones finish. So, we have been making progress there. And the factory going to move off over to the side, going to drop onto the tech lab. Barracks going to move over to the reactor. And yeah, two more barracks, four from fifth racks coming through. Onto the main base as well. So that is going to be five racks, but it's of course three CC, which means that this is not unexpected or anything. Oh, 
Omri's already about halfway done, so that's going to be another option here from Oliveira. Give himself the chance to move in toward 2-2 two -two upgrades. Give himself the chance to... Uh... Yeah, just just continue to pressure up. Obviously no Hellions in play or anything, so no Hellbats to morph, but... Just the 2-2 two -two powers you into that mid-game. Meanwhile, Dark continue to show us his plans. Infestation pit, Hydra dead. Maybe even a chance to see Lurkers this time around that we haven't seen so far. In the TVZs today, we've, we've not seen Lurkers at all, right? As far as I'm aware. I guess they're definitely kind of interesting. Oh, the Hydra Den comes up, the infestation bit about to finish. And missile upgrades coming by, the Link Speed coming through. And the Reaper just comes in over on the right side, the hatchery is going to take a shot. 2 2 upgrades continue out again, the Queens will be there, the Lings are there. The Reaper taking a few more hits, and he's going to go down to those roaches, which come across and they're able to connect. I mean, it's indeed the Lurk Den from Dark, so... You know what? I love it on this map. More so than others, simply for the fact that I feel like this map is so choky. Like, there's just... It just feels like it's almost impossible to take a fight outside of a choke point on Golden Aura. There's a lot of really good defendable positions you want to set up with your... Uh, you can set up with your Lurkers as well, so that should help a lot. Uh, absolutely loving this map in terms of uh, defending. And it's interesting, because it's not like a super big map, but it's a very defendable smaller map, which is... Like a fun little compromise, you know? It's a very fun little compromise. And 2 2 upgrades continue up. That combat shield is on its way through. And just gonna be seeing the sizing spine stone up for the look. There's no surprise about that. You wanna go straight into those tech units. Get their upgrades working, make sure they're going to be as powerful as they possibly can be. Those are all the reasons why these units are great in the first place, so... Yeah, get them to the point of greatness, uh, essentially. Prince will unload on the right-hand side. Oliveira wants to go and try and put some pressure on over on the other side of the map then, so we'll get that set up immediately. He's loading up into the Medivacs. We do see a couple of crows of bars coming down. The Medivacs having to dodge away. 2 2 upgrades continuing out. And once again, we see plus 2 missiles, plus 2 carapaces all coming through for the moment. A lot of bio coming out onto the map here, pushing towards the upper left hand side. Like I say, we will have those first initial lurkers in position. They do have their range upgrade, so defensively they're going to be pretty good. The other upgrade, Adaptive Talents, helps them a lot more offensively and just being able to move around a little bit. So, good to, uh, you know, have that first upgrade done already, as you see, Oliveira. As he moves up, upgrade lead, but he just can't really put that into play. How is he meant to take a fight in this situation? I don't actually know. I don't think he is, if I'm going to be completely honest with you guys. I don't think this is a situation you fight in at all. The bio continues to move up toward one another. And here we go. I mean, the lurkers are going to try and uh, hold this position, which is exactly what they do. Oliveira, man. This was this was not the moment to send it. I get you feel like this is a good time, and I get you maybe afraid of lurkers getting into higher numbers, but this map, there's a reason Dark has done it on this map, because these positions are not really engageable. And again, Oliveira has just given us a great example of why you can't just go running in on gold and aura. So it looks good for Dark as he puts himself in a great spot there. That's a good kill. On a great, on a good amount of units. Lurkers will continue to chase as we do see Oliveira now. Still trying to attack, but there's Lurkers left at home too. Again, pray tell me what Oliver is meant to do in this situation. I feel like I know the answer. Get out of the game, perhaps, because Dark is on the hunt going across the map. Hunting down right now. Tank is going to get uh, picked off. Uh, Bio is going to be sitting here. The Lurk is going to continue coming through. Three the rip raids are building up. All of that just continues in for the moment as we have our units... Just pressing forward, a couple of lurks will get knocked away at the Ravager battle will come in. Our bio wraps around from the top side as well. A lot of these Ravagers continue to go down. The Lurkers will be the ones that hold their own at the end. Again, we have nothing to really fight against them is the current issue. A 
Look, shots continue to fly. That siege tank taking some hits. A kaboom on the lurker. Lurker will go down. As we try and snipe our way through a couple of these other lurkers as well. Damage being done. A lot of these lurkers being cleaned out at the moment. Again, three three upgrades continuing in the ghosts. Marines, siege tank all building the lurker still firing. Another depot will get killed. More lurker shots. Just gonna pick that lurker off. And these lurkers just gonna reposition a few times over. And the lurkers now going in after a few of these SCVs. So yeah, quite a few of these SCVs getting picked away at right now as we just have a bio coming back up. The lurker will stay burrowed on the ground. A couple goes to Marines all coming through. We've got ourselves the tank and everything else setting up as well. Here comes the abduct on a ghost. Hydra's taking some damage. Another ghost going down as well. Parasite Bomb is active on these medevacs, and, well, Dark has a lot of money to spend, and as Ghost Snipes come through, maybe these Lurk are still being here on their own accord is a little bit too extreme of a play. We're actually going to end up losing quite a lot of these Lurk as we try and step further forward. We're building 13 Hydras again. Dark has had money to spend for a while, and if he'd spent it before now, maybe this would have been a simpler affair. Obviously, sometimes nothing is simpler than StarCraft, and... Dark just brings another lurker into position, continues to hit that mineral line, continue to force Oliveira to scan. And, I mean, scans especially are seeming like a, a rare commodity right now. He's being forced to scan all over the place, which really does make it difficult to kind of afford all of those scans. To have the energy for each and every one of them is not easy. A couple of missile turrets and four ghosts on the way, the few marines coming up as well. Okay, gets in position to fire up once more. More shots, go still coming through. And Ling's on the way out. That balance speed is about to click into play. The plus three carapace upgrade, the melee upgrade, all building through. Eleven new lurkers. I mean, to be fair, Lover is going to even out the army supplies in this game and even out the supplies in general in this game, which I think is kind of down to dark, just being a little bit overly aggressive, maybe trying to get, again get too much done with too little on the map. At the same time, Doc has established himself the gold base, which is obviously an absolutely incredible place to be right now, so that's fantastic. I mean, having uh, the gold base to work from means he should be able to afford a whole bunch of stuff right now, as Marines and Marauders, Liberators 2 are on the way out. Oliveira getting a lot of this on the go, so a lot of that building here. I think being Lurka runs over to the right side. We are going to see a bunch of snipes coming down. Banelings. Trying to get in towards this army. Oliveira will actually just stomp through it. Dark really has not continued to take good trades. And now Oliveira's army isn't actually just not stoppable. Well, Dark's going to rely on the lurkers again. But of course, now we've got so many more ghosts. It's not going to be as one-sided as it was earlier. The Bane's going to try and dive through. A lot of the ghosts stacked on the top side. But the bio on the bottom is going to break through. Both players lose a lot of supply. I don't think Dark's going to stabilize. He's going to have a lot of units just popping out of hatcheries and just being killed as they arrive, although we are on creep and those marines do not split. Those veiling connections are good. Can Dark scramble together a defense here? I uh, genuinely would be impressed because I feel like he's actually in a lot of trouble. He's killed a lot of SCVs on the other side. He just needs to hold on. As the numbers get lower here from Oliveira, a couple of lurkers might begin to get the job done as well. Ling is shutting down some of the reinforcements as well. Those are more efficient trades from Dark. Lurkers getting sniped as they try to burrow up, not being allowed to kind of do what they need to right here. Hydra Den is going to go down. That's going to be the end of Hydra production. Dark, I wonder if there's a world where actually just pulling some drones would be worthwhile. Just to guarantee you a bit more safety. Thanks, still firing. Bio still firing. The drone's going to pull off this mineral line. Going to go chasing down the bio over on the bottom side there. So he's going to go on a big hunt. Liberia Siege to top that base, trying to get a bit of something done as well as you have Medivacs, Tank, Marines all coming through. Ling Bane continues forward, the Marines will continue to go down. Another hatchery in the bottom left will fall, so... Well, Dark loses access to the gold base, but obviously Oliveira is on only 23 SCVs. Dark still has mining bases, and now that Oliveira is not on his front doorstep, Dark can continue to regather his units together all at once before fighting, instead of just getting a few units here and a few units there. That was part of the strength that I loved that, you know, from Oliveira. 
in the build up to this position right now. I'm gonna grab that lurker right there, just up off the high ground, so that goes down pretty much immediately. Might as well fire up again, even more SCVs going down. Oliveira has 19 workers left, but Doc's army supply is at 28. So Doc, again, army is not doing enough, maybe too much focus on the attacking on the other side. Oliveira knows it, man. He is just going to send it. And what's Doc building? Because he can't build Hydras anymore, so he can't effectively build new Lurkers because he doesn't have the Hydras to build them from. I think Oliveira is going to get this done in the end. Ten Workers and, and dropping still. But how is Doc ever meant to get the army up to fight this force of Oliveira? Lings aren't going to do it. we got an Infestor on the way. Okay, I can get a little bit excited about Infestor maybe, but... Hard to say I'm really still a believer at all. Oliveira, four SCVs remain in the game, but 50 army supply advantage. If, if there was a way to make Oliveira actually care about going back home again, maybe again it would be enough from Dark. Trying to find the best bailing shots that he can. He has not got control of this game, guys. Oliveira is knocking down hatcheries. He's on top of Dark spaces. An absolutely grueling finish to this best of three. But Oliveira is going to beat Dark across the finish line by a has, uh, by a hair, pretty much. We're about to finish, plus two melee coming through. Hydra's coming up. Let's get rid of the hatchery in the bottom corner. I mean, can Dark win some kind of a base trade? I think absolutely not is the answer to that. There's a Liberator moving around. Dark is... Trying to build a couple of Hydras, a couple of Lurkers over here getting dropped as well. Obviously, it's an extremely close game, so Dark will fight it out until absolutely every option has been exhausted here. He currently is even forcing his opponent to lift up units because of the lack of scans available. So trying to utilize that to kind of keep his Lurkers alive. But apparently there are just enough scans to keep on going in Dark. Again, he's building up more Hydras, he's building up more Lurkers. His plan is absolutely at this point apparently to just try to essentially get himself to again maybe a stage where he has enough lurkers to kind of stabilize or something but I mean Oliver has zero SCVs but now he's muling however that means less scans available once again although does he realize that Doc has been able to rebuild lurkers because now not having scans might be painful we'll start to rebuild an SCV or two bio tank moving around the bottom Coming out to that bottom left-hand corner, taking that gold base. Hydra's coming through. Four SCVs now building at a time. The rebuild of economy begins here from Oliveira. Can Dark rebuild an army in the time that Oliveira is going to slow down and rebuild economy? I don't know if he's going to slow down, I suppose, is the, is the new point there. As you can already see, Oliveira moving up the left-hand side. He did miss these lurkers on the scan, and there's an Infestor as well. Fungal available. That's a good scan. The Infestor at least staying out of uh, range, though. If you can hide that Infestor, maybe you pop up, grab a Fungal, and maybe that's your opportunity. I don't think that was a good enough Fungal growth as these Lurkers want to try and jump on this. They are just going to move straight in. The tanks sieging up are going to get one shot off at most, maybe. Drones being used to tank, of course. That is something you can do. Lurkers have to start a step further forward. Oliveira's army supply is dropping. He's forced to lift up. Units from the right side. No one where he needs to target right now is Doc says G G G G G G G's. He's just not gonna do it. Ah yeah 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 yeah. What a game! Oliveira takes it two to one in the end. An absolute bonkers uh, performance of StarCraft two between both players. I mean, it takes two to play a game as great as that one, and that is gonna be.